Marvelous comes to a world of magic as science and the arcane combine to make marvels. Meet steampunk inventors and orc mystics at the Volsun Hub on beastsofwar.com. Anime cyberpunk style meets skirmish combat in Infinity. Experience eight high-tech factions and fight to control the human sphere at the Infinity Hub on beastsofwar.com. I'm Warren, a huge fan of tabletop games. But few games out there have a story so deep as Warhammer 40k. I'm setting out to explore this vast universe and the game with my trusty guide, AJ. So join us on Warhammer 40k Charted. Hello and welcome to 40k Charted. So we're going to be doing something um, um, for the next little while. We're kind of ad hoc in between what we're doing. Um, it's uh, AJ's called it Unit Spotlights. Yeah. So we've been looking at the Emperor, we've been looking at, um, uh, we've done a couple of themed events, like a themed week and a themed weekend, but uh, AJ's going to zoom me right in, just to, just to mix things up a little bit here and there, yeah. into a, a specific unit to try and give me a better understanding of um, what I'm looking at on the table, whether it's mine or my opponent's, and what it does, what I can do with it, and whether I should fear it. <laughs> Um, so, what's the topic of this unit spotlight then? So today, I wanted to look at the um, Can Canoptech Wraiths. Um, these are a unit that are in the Necron Codex, mm -hmm. um, and I've been around pretty much since um, uh, Necrons changed from the very original Terminator-looking kind of miniatures in Second Edition uh, to the Third Edition Codex, which was much more kind of. Uh, green, I suppose. The, the, yeah, and it was, green and black and became, silver. And yeah, and they, they've they've since become quite almost Egyptian or Babylonian. Yeah, in, very in, in of, their style. I know yeah. John's a big fan of the new style of Necrons. I've got to say, it's grown on me as well. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, it was a bit of a shock originally when they went from the 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 hulking kind of Terminator esque <laughs> relentless move across the battlefield to something that became. Uh, in uh, now with time to have uh, uh, formed an appreciation of it, mm -hmm. I think it's something much more swift, something much more scalpel-like and deadly yeah. in, in the feel uh, of, of how it works. I mean, so. they they still have that sort of implacable advance across mm -hmm. the universe feel, um, but at the same time, they have so much more character in them now yeah. uh, than they used to. They used to be very kind of bland. Mm -hmm. um, a great army to play, you know that you know. Uh, mindless warriors is always kind of um, provides a lot for the narrative, yeah. but at the same time, given that it's particularly the special characters um, in the books, a lot more kind of flavor mm -hmm. and character definitely allows that army to be a lot more interesting to collect yeah. um, over over a long period of time. Um, and the wraiths in the book are probably one of my favorite units, um, purely because I think they they. Do capture that kind of move away from the implacable advanced mindless warriors. Mm. Um, we'll kick off. Uh, we'll kick off. What do they look like? So the race are the race are, are almost kind of very much like the um, the the uh, almost like a mechanical version of the Tyranid uh, Ravagers. Yeah. Uh, so they kind of travel along on their tails. Um, they've got lots of limbs that are kind of very sharp and spiky. Mm -hmm. um, they are essentially, um, they're actually kind of the custodians of the Necron tomb worlds. So as we know, the Necron tomb worlds, they lie dormant. Uh, they have lay, lay dormant for millennia mm -hmm. um, uh, as the Necrons slumber. Uh, yeah. And every now and again, they get disturbed, uh, usually by the Adeptus Mechanicus. Uh, here we go probing around and putting their nose where they shouldn't be. Um, now we're gonna we'll probably do a more in depth video just looking at the Necrons mm -hmm. itself. But to try and put this into to perspective, so as I understand it, the Necrons mm -hmm. were an old race mm -hmm. that of fleshy, gooey people like me and you. Yeah, yeah. That then embodied themselves into metal. Mm -hmm. Why did they then go to sleep? So they were basically deceived by the Kaitan. Uh -huh. um, and what happened was um, they were searching for the power. They were at the time they were battling uh, the old ones, mm -hmm. um, who are again ancient um, race uh, of beings. 
um, interdimensional race of beings. So this this war was happening, you know, across dimensions. Yeah. Um, they were essentially a lot more powerful than even the races that we currently have mm -hmm. in 40k. Um, and the Necrons were always looking for a way to beat them. Mm -hmm. And along came the Kaitan, uh, particularly the Deceiver, um, and basically tried to show them a way that they could beat uh, the, the Old Ones once and for all. And what ended up happening was um, they deceived them and tricked them into becoming these uh, metal uh, autom automatons to their mm. will, um, essentially enslaving them inside these machines. Yeah. Um, after that, then, the Necrons uh, sort of entombed themselves and became entombed in the, uh, in the tomb worlds. So was that a deliberate choice by the, by the Necrons, then? That's a good question. I'm not too sure if that was... Below. I'm not too sure if it was a deliberate, <laughs> deliberate attempt yeah. to... Um, to sort of, uh, the reason being is that, you know, because um, I love Necron. Mm -hmm. I think Necrons are are an awesome, awesome race. They've just got more and more awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. um, and they're easy to paint. So. <laughs> <laughs> the but what I oh, but what I'm searching for in this series, and it, it's very much a selfish th th thing, is I want to have a better understanding of. The, the battlefields mm -hmm. of why the battles might take place because it, you know for the the narrative of any game has to start with why are we there mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the reason I I deviate in these videos and I bring you on on onto these topics <laughs> is you know if we're facing uh, Necrons um, it, it's kind of it's cool to know why mm -hmm. we, we might be there so they for whatever reason and they entombed themselves. Mm -hmm. And in many ways, they maybe defeated the, the, the old ones by just sleeping it off. You know? <laughs> so, but they, they there, were no... some, there were some very cataclysmic events throughout the, throughout the galaxy at that time. Um, so that's something we will explore in, in future videos. Maybe look at that <gasps> in much more depth. Cliffhanger in me. Cliffhanger <laughs> in me. Right, okay. Right. But, uh, so they've entombed themselves. Mm -hmm. This took place, what, uh, 10,000, oh, hundreds of thousands of years ago? This, or? this would have been millennia ago it's it's um is this like even before the the great the the great rifts opened up with the slanesh and, with the fall uh, yeah yeah i think this is before that that but again i'll have to check my timeline but i'm pretty sure this was all right. this is really ancient history so the the and what is a tomb world uh, effectively like it would look like any other world but just lying dormant underneath it uh, is what it is a uh, pyramidal kinds of most of them are um completely barren on the surface mm -hmm. um usually uh, kind of um very much desert terrain um completely kind of uh, empty and lifeless mm -hmm. um i'd imagine there are some that are kind of maybe more snowy or some that are kind of more desert like i'd imagine but generally you find that they're completely and utterly barren of life mm -hmm. uh, on the surface um is there is there a, a, a reason for that? You know, like is there a reason why um, I couldn't have a game or a, or a campaign that I'm playing with my friends where we've landed on a planet that is actually occupied and it's beautiful. It, it's a lovely looking planet, but actually lurking beneath the surface is, is a tomb world. Or is there a reason why they're more barren? Have they well, stripped there's it nothing or? to say that someone along the time along along the line couldn't have maybe terraformed, terraformed. it or okay. or, or yes. you know attempted to create a colony. Mm -hmm. a, Unbeknownst to them, that there's a, a, a waiting evil beneath yeah. the surface or a slumbering evil. Um, so maybe that, that, would, that would make a, certainly a lot, of, a lot of narrative for a campaign mm -hmm. where um, they could have created... So the actual tomb itself, is it, is it, it's a kind of like... We're familiar with Necron kind of architecture with the monolith and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So we know that there's these kind of pyramidic kind yeah. of vibe and feel. We've mm -hmm. seen the Forge World stuff that they've, they've released for it. I, I, that's basically what we're thinking of when we think yeah, of it yeah. of a tomb world. That's that that's there, what we're you may have, uh, you may have found a, a hole or something, and you drop down into it, and suddenly you're in these catacombs. That and... certainly seems to be seems to be the way it kind of goes with that. Uh -huh. You know, kind of these kind of. Um... So what wakes them? Just they're disturbed, and something something wakes them. Well, or... this is where we get to the wraiths. 
I knew there'd be a way I could bring this round. Okay. So basically, this is where the wraiths um, are the custodians of these tomb worlds. So as the as the warriors lie dormant and and as the commanders lie dormant um, in their stasis fields, um, the wraiths, these constructs, the likes of the wraiths and also the tomb spiders, mm -hmm. um, they're actually constructs that the the um, Necrons created. Basically, to watch over their sleep. Guard dogs. Guard dogs. Okay. <laughs> so, but also uh, beyond that, they're also actually essentially maintenance men and repair men as well. Yeah. And they have the ability to um, repair any kind of fault that some of the stasis fields might be might be experiencing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a long time to kind of keep a machine running. You know, yeah. there must be some sort of machinery or or. Um, equipment that is kind of keeping the stasis fields going and, and keeping the energy um, levels up. So there must be some sort of power generators, mm -hmm. maybe. Um, so these wraiths are basically designed to act as the eyes and ears yeah. of, the, of the tomb world. Um, so you can imagine them kind of scurrying around, mm -hmm. kind of you know, checking things, you know, <laughs> analyzing it and mm -hmm. Then you, know, but but they they're also they're they're slightly ethereal if I remember the, yeah. the, these guys. You know, they, they can. It's almost like they phase in and out of. Yeah, so existence. they're equipped with what's called a. Um, I have to read this because it's very complicated words. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dimensional destabilization matrix. Yeah. Um, and that's actually uh, what they would use as a weapon as well. Um, when when intruder, intruders arrive. So how does that work? What's a so, what's a dimension of destabilization <laughs> matrix? So it's essentially. And, and, and all Justin wants to know is, can you reverse the polarity on it? <laughs> so <laughs> how does it work? What does it do? Uh, basically, it's a phase shifter. Yeah. Uh, so it kind of phases in and out of um, sort of the material world and, and our dimension, um, allowing it. And the re the reason that they kind of designed it that way was so that it's essentially like. A screwdriver that can fit any kind of uh, type of screw head. The idea is that kind of um, it, they can phase it out of our dimension and phase it in when it's inside the casing of the equipment. Mm -hmm. And the idea of that is so that they don't have to kind of take o take all the equipment apart and put it all oh. back together again. So they can repair stuff without dismantling it. Yeah, they can yeah. just go into the point that needs repaired by passing through, then phase in a small part of themselves mm. to be able to do, what to do it whatever it is they... Then, <laughs> I can see why that might be a weapon. Yeah. They just phase into you and then phase out and you just go... Pfft. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, and, and in actual fact, um, what happens is that whenever, um, you know, say uh, people make planet fall upon the, these planets, uh, they go exploring mm -hmm. um, and then you never hear from them again. Yeah. What has happened is... They're wearing them. They're, well, they, 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 are, they could be a say. What happens then is they send another team to investigate yeah. why they were missing. And sometimes that team just happens upon bodies with no marks on them. Uh, because they've been sort of killed from, killed the, inside. from the inside. The weapon Grimdark. has phased into them and phased Grimdark. out. And, <laughs> and there's no kind of explanation. So they don't know why, why they've kind of... Um, Does this mean that they can move through walls and stuff like that then? Yeah. And does that translate into gameplay? Very yeah, definitely. I'm going to come on to gameplay in a minute, but okay. <laughs> definitely in the game, they're they're one of the most maneuverable units. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly, we can see that you know from their from their kind of um, their background. Um, they operate with with the tomb spiders. The tomb spiders are active at this time as well. They're another one of the constructs. Mm -hmm. um, but they're they're kind of more as a kind of um, a hub yeah. of information. Uh, they kind of store all the information and then send out the. Um, the race to kind of oh that needs repaired and you know that needs. So working. if you were going to There's be intruders. playing a, a kind of like a really Necron themed scenario, mm -hmm. one way to do that would be to um, have some of these guys kind of uh, on the board first. Yeah. You know that that um, and maybe have them hidden in some way or use a some kind of a token or some kind of a, a thing to almost to like a blip. Around. Yeah, mm -hmm. like a blip. Um, and then have it that uh, deployment is based on where they are. So if they if they ar arise, I'm making up scenarios already. <laughs> but if if it arises and you can't kill it in yeah. the turn that it arises, then 
other Necrons and deploy around Oh, okay, it. so they start to kind yeah. of... Whereas if you can kill it quickly, and I'm sure it's not easy, but if you can <laughs> kill it quickly, then then they don't. But then there's another one that's going to pop up. And yeah. So you've no idea where all the Necrons are going to be because they're dependent on these guys sounding, sounding the alarm. That'd be quite a cool laugh. Are you yeah, seeing? Yeah, Are you yeah, seeing? Good, yeah. Right. Stats. Um, can you talk me through um, how all that fluff then has been translated yeah. into, the, into the game? So... Can I just say, if you're reading your codex at home, by the way, you'll find this on page 44. Mm-hmm. So. Um, so the wraiths are a fast attack choice, mm-hmm. um, uh, which kind of suits their, their kind of... Uh, their fluff as well. Um, they are uh, a unit of beasts, um, so they follow the beast rules. Yeah. Um, which is pretty great. Um, I'll actually just go to go to that page and, and read out what beasts are, mm-hmm. um, because it it actually makes them quite a quite a a useful unit. Um, so beasts, um, their movement uh, can move up to twelve inches in the movement phase. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're not slowed down by difficult terrain, um, even when charging. So they don't have the minus two to their charge range mm-hmm. when charging through difficult terrain, um, and automatically pass um, dangerous terrain tests. Yeah. Um, so that's quite. So you can see there already they're kind of phasing through the terrain and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um, so that also means they don't need to make difficult terrain tests. They always move their six inches. Yeah. Uh, or sorry, their twelve inch move. So they're fast. It's very very quick. And they ignore terrain basically. Mm-hmm. So they, they move yeah. through it. They're one hundred and thirty five points. For well, it's rates. um, it's one hundred and one hundred and twenty points. Sorry, that's just some of the upgrades I put in the. All right, okay. In the unit, um, but uh, they're one hundred and twenty points base. So they're forty points each, uh-huh. um, standard. Yeah. Um, so in actual fact, when you think about that, that's in and around Terminator kind of money, there for for a wraith. Um, but they're better and they're better from a movement perspective than Terminator. Much quicker. Are they better from a close combat perspective? Than <laughs> well, uh, I'll read you out the special rules before I go into the, the stats. Yeah. Um, I'll actually read you out the special rules as well. Um, they're fearless. Good, yeah. Which is great. Uh, they are very bulky, so they count as three miniatures. Uh-huh. <clears throat> um, because they're, uh, they've got wraith flight and wraith form. Okay? And these are very important rules. This is looking back to our phase. Mm hmm. Uh, equipment or, or interdimensional uh, equipment. The dimensional destabilization matrix. <laughs> That's the one. Um, they have uh, the, the special rules. So when moving, can attack wraiths. This is wraith flight. Uh-huh. Uh, can move over all, move over all other models and terrain as if it were open ground. Mm-hmm. Um, hi- however, they cannot end their moving their move on top of other models and can only end their move on top of impassable terrain. If it is possible to actually place the models on top of it, so mm-hmm. um, that's quite good because in their movement phase they can actually move through enemy units. So they're almost like uh, jump. So they don't have to move around a land raider, for example. They just, no. zzz- just move right the way through it. Through it, and and uh, I want to take you back because you had mentioned that they were uh, very bulky, mm-hmm. so the equivalent of three models. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, to my untrained mind, that would really only make um, Make a difference to me if I was trying to put them into some sort of transport, but yeah. maybe I'm not thinking about it. Like, is there any other scenarios or, or reasons why why very bulky would make a difference? To um, me? Not really. I mean, buildings and transports are kind of the main sort of um, the main sort of thing there. It's not a it's not a big issue, but it means that if you do have a transport that you want to kind of stick them in, mm-hmm. they they generally won't won't fit. Too many of them in, yeah. But okay. they're they're not huge unit sizes. Well, it's um, just with the movement they have. I, I I'm I can't really see why I would bother putting them into a transport. Exa- anyway, exactly. So. Um, the other rule then is wraith form. Now this is where it gets um, even more interesting. Um, wraith form basically grants kind of tech wraiths a three up in vulnerable save. Um, three up in three vulnerable, up in vulnerable save. save. So they essentially run around with storm shields. So they're they're pretty good. Three up and Vun is probably the one of the best that you can get. Yeah. Um, it means as well that you don't need to worry about cover uh-huh. um, to a large degree. Um, so their stats then? Yeah. I'll give you the stats. So okay. <clears throat> weapon skill four, ballistic skill four. So that's pretty standard for Necrons. Yep. Yeah. Um, this is where it gets interesting. Strength six. That's good. Yeah. Toughness five. Uh huh. Two wounds. Yeah. Uh, only initiative two. So uh-huh. that may be a problem. Uh, three attacks, 
Um, leadership 10, not that much of a worry because we're fearless anyway. Yeah. Um, and a 3 plus plus save. Um, now, where it also gets interesting is. So it's a 3 plus save and a 3 plus and vulnerable save. Yeah. Yeah. Where it gets particularly interesting is the kind of tech race also have rending. So they're glancing on sixes. Then. So they're they're glancing. So they're um, at it. The way it works is they get they always wound on sixes. Yeah. Um, and when they wound on sixes, they are counted as AP two as well. Uh huh. So it means um, they're quite good against um, the likes of wraith knights, things like that. There, mm -hmm. which have got um, lots of wounds, uh, lots of high toughness wounds. So um, send these guys in against the big guys is not is not out of the question. It, no, it, no, it's, it's not a, out of the question. It's a good strategy. Then. Yeah. Um, again, uh, also against vehicles then as well. Would you against vehicles? They they could potentially with strength six. So the way rending works is um, they would get strength six, and then you would roll on your armor penetration. Yeah. If you roll a six, then you get an extra D three. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that means that they could get a strength six plus six plus D three, which is a total of. 15? Mm -hmm. 15, yeah. Um, so they could actually penetrate a, a land raider. Yeah. Um, if they get, you know, good rolls. Yeah. Um, not probably the most... Um, it's not the best Not the safest them. bet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, if you got lucky, um, you could you could have, you know, you could take out a land raider. See, my big problem is um, uh, putting, uh, uh, putting the wrong units into combat with the wrong mm -hmm. units. Yeah, and there's two scenarios here that are frustrating, and one is really frustrating. The first scenario is that you haven't quite worked out that they can't do damage to who you're going up against, mm -hmm. and then they get squished. Mm -hmm. Probably more frustrating than that is you, you you haven't worked out that they can fully do damage to what you're putting them up against, yeah. and then they end up locked in combat. <laughs> with two units that can't really do anything and they just sit and bounce off each other yeah. and neither one wants to try and retreat because then the other guy gets a free swipe at you <laughs> and uh, so yeah. it, I like units like this where yeah you need good rules but there's still always a chance yeah. that you can actually do the damage with it because you know it, it's that scenario of you know you're doing well but there's a big ass land raider sitting in your way the guys that can truly deal with it or maybe uh, locked in combat or the other end of the board or, or out of position yeah. and you think to yourself it's last turn possibly here I'll throw them in and see what happens well this is this is why I love units like this here um, because they have the ability to do m fulfill most roles on the battlefield some mm -hmm. they are better at some they're not quite as good at um, but whenever we look at games that we're more and more like more uh, more regularly people are playing the Maelstrom missions. Mm -hmm. um, so they're randomly generated objectives. So what's happening is you need units that are tactically viable in lots of situations. Yeah, so more flexibility. More yeah. flexibility. Mm -hmm. These guys are very, very fast. Yeah. Uh, meaning if you've got objectives that you need captured, they can get there. Mm -hmm. um, they have the ability to deal with small elite units um, mm -hmm. with the rending. They also generate a decent amount of attacks. They've got three attacks each, so they can probably chew through a decent amount of horde. Yeah. Um, and even if they come up against something with a particularly nasty weapon, they've got those three plus invulnerable saves as well. Mm -hmm. So they're fairly survivable. Uh, they're toughness five with two wounds. So you need strength 10 to instant kill them. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of wounds to chew through before you kind of start to make any real damage yeah. in the unit. Um, it's definitely worth upgrading these guys with a few more bodies, um, five or six. You can take up to six total, um, but that certainly adds a lot, of, a lot of wounds to kind of chew through. Yeah. And the other thing about these guys that I quite like is just throwing them out there and kind of saying, right, if you don't deal with these guys, they're going to be hitting your lines next turn. These guys have that instant death. The special rule, do they? They have an ability to, t to take instant death. Yeah. Um, so one of the upgrades that you can give the unit is uh, the trans-dimensional beamer. Mm -hmm. um, now it's fairly short range, it's only 12 inch range. Um, strength 4 AP2. Um, it's heavy 1. Um, so it's not a terrific we weapon in its own right. Um, strength 4 AP2, uh, kill a terminator fairly easily. Yeah. Um, but it does have the exile ray rule. And the exile, exile ray rule is 
When, a fi when firing a weapon with a special rule, a to wound roll of six wounds automatically, regardless mm -hmm. of the target's toughness, and the wound has the instant death special rule. Against vehicles and buildings, an armor penetration roll of a six causes a penetrating hit, regardless of the target's armor value. And what is the instant death? So the instant death special, special rule basically causes instant death to anything that is eligible to be instant death. So yeah. usually um, when we are double the target's uh, toughness, mm -hmm. so if, our, if we have a weapon that's strength 10, these guys are toughness 5, um, so they would be instant death if they failed their, their save. Yeah. It would be removed from play. Um, so that's pretty potent whenever you come up against the likes of characters. Mm -hmm. um, even even bigger things, um, you know, uh, the likes of uh, monstrous creatures. Mm -hmm. um, I'll just double check. I think they can be instant killed. I know gargantuan creatures can't be instant killed. Yeah. Um, yeah, monstrous creatures. Um, so you could you could one shot a, a tyrant, hive tyrant or something like mm -hmm. that there. So it's fairly potent. Yeah. Um, however, it is very very short range. Uh, it's only range 12. Um, but the fact they move fast, mm -hmm. they're not interrupted by terrain, mm -hmm. means you can go as the crow flies just directly <laughs> towards something yeah. that you want to try and take out. Yeah. Now, if I had a big monstrous creature in my army, and now knowing what they are capable of, potentially, mm -hmm. and I see them making a beeline for it, I'm immediately going to be on the back foot. <laughs> because nobody, and I guarantee you, nobody... Well, maybe somebody more experienced players than me are going to be able to sit back and relax when something like that is zipping straight across the battle, battlefield. Two turns, you know, if you haven't dealt with it, he's there. He has the potential to instant death you. Mm. Tell me that's not going to distract me. <laughs> <laughs> Having said that, though, I think um, given that they've given that they have the potential to rend, uh, which gives them that AP two yeah. automatic wound. Um, they've got three attacks each. Um, they're fairly cheap for what they do. Forty points isn't a lot of points for a toughness five, two wound, mm -hmm. uh, three three up and vulnerable s model. You know that's that's a fairly e effective model, particularly when it's moving as fast as it is. Yeah. If I'm honest, I wouldn't bother giving them any guns. Really, just no, get them in the I combat. Just, I just get three squads of six. Through a, through three squads, three squads six. of six. Just, stick, just, Spam. just feel like you're <laughs> so six, twelve, eighteen of these 18. guys. Right. What would you do with them? I would just throw them forward uh -huh. and say, "There you go." And then you have, you know, the the other half are, you know, um, so what two forty? Uh, we're talking there about seven hundred odd points, maybe seven fifty seven. That's two forty, two forty, two forty. That's my maths is terrible. Well, it's 480, 480 seven twenty. Yeah, seven twenty. Seven twenty. Yeah. Um, so seven twenty uh, points worth of. So you've still got in an average army maybe another thousand ish. Yeah, seventeen points. fifty points. You'd still have got you a know, thousand points. Just throw those guys forward. They're never going to kill all that in mm -hmm. in one turn. You might lose one complete unit um, if you're unlucky. Um, or if he, or if it? he's got, or if he's got some serious. So um, you're basically you're, you're say, so you build you build the finesse into the rest of the army. Yeah. But you basically from turn one just start chucking wraiths mm -hmm. forward. Uh, you know they're coming out there. They've been disturbed and they're coming out mm -hmm. to do their thing. Um, that's bound to put you on the back foot. Yeah, because I mean they're fearless. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about them running away or uh -huh. uh, if there's one left, then that's going into something. Yeah. It's got a three up in one. Even if you throw it into, you know, a, a sort of a small, a Devastator squad. Mm -hmm. I mean, they can jump through. Remember, they can go right through enemy units, units as well. in their movement phase. So you don't need to yeah. worry about going around anything. Just go straight over. I can see why you picked these guys. <laughs> then, I can really see why you picked these guys. <laughs> they're, they're amazing. They're, they're fantastic. So you got one left, throw it into a Devastator squad. That Devastator squad probably isn't going to kill it. But yeah. you maybe stop four LAS cannons shooting at your other... Mm -hmm. Your other unit. Um, the chances of you losing all of them, unless he's got some serious destroyer weapons out there, maybe, you know, um, I mentioned uh, Wraith Knights. I wouldn't maybe throw them into combat against um, a Wraith Knight, particularly if it's got the sword and shield mm -hmm. formation, because that's a lot of D uh, in, the, in the combat. 
destroyer weapon, but a lot of what? A lot of D. What is D? A lot of D. Sounds sounds a bit naughty, doesn't it? Yeah. What what is um, D? Do, D is our destroyer weapons. Uh huh. Um. So destroyer weapons are essentially um, weapons that roll on a different table. Yeah. Um. I'll 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 pull up the chart, seeing as we've got it here. Um, basically, D weapons um, kind of work a little bit differently. They work outside the usual sort of strength. Yeah. Um, they're kind of quite a new addition. Uh, a lot of the gargantian creatures um, and a lot of the... Are these the D weapons that were typically in Apocalypse or, or the, the big Apocalypse? Yeah, or, or yeah. Was that the essentially D's, in Escalation, yeah. 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 So the destroyer weapon kind of works a little bit differently. Um, when you roll the hit, after you've roll, rolled the hit, then you roll, roll on the destroyer weapon attack table mm -hmm. um, and that is basically so if you're going up against a vehicle uh, or a building on a one the model is unharmed uh, on a two to five it's a solid hit so the model suffers a penetrating hit uh, that causes it to lose d3 hull points instead of one mm -hmm. so you can essentially wreck a vehicle yeah. uh, with one hit and on a six it causes a devastating hit so the model suffers a penetrating hit that causes it to lose d6 plus six hull points instead of one <laughs> no saves of any kind are allowed against this hit. So 12 so potential hits. You then. could cause 12 potential hull points mm. on, on one vehicle. So you can one-shot um, You're going to be averaging blade. 6, 7, 8, mm. 9. You're going to be mm. averaging about 9 hits on it. Yeah. You, you can, you can one-shot a, a beam blade or, or something yeah. like that there, something with 9 to 12 mm -hmm. sort of hull points. Um, then on the non-vehicle side, it's very similar. So on a 1, the model is unharmed. Um, on a 2 to 5, the model suffers a hit uh, that wins automatically and causes it to lose D3 wins instead of 1. Yeah. So your race can start to rack up wins very quickly, uh, but they still get their save. Um, the mo and then on a 6, uh, the model suffers a hit that wins automatically and causes D6 plus 6 wins instead of 1. Uh, so no saves of any co uh, kind are allowed against this hit. Mm -hmm. So... That's so you've got to be there. There are some instances then where you just you're not going to be throwing these guys in. So no. if, if there's D weapons and things, forget mm -hmm. about it. You know, yeah. it's, it's probably yeah, not no, the way there's, to no, go. there's no point. Right. So in terms of how to play them, okay, mm -hmm. your uh, your thoughts were on having three blobs mm -hmm. and just chuck them forward, chuck them forward, <laughs> and see what happens. Well, I mean, the, the the eyes and the ears of the of the Necron army. So yeah. they should be at the front. They should be the sort of scouting units, um, as well as that, you know. I, unless you're going up against destroyer weapons, the enemy is going to find it very difficult to uh, kill a whole squad of them mm -hmm. in one go. Um, and they're, they're just great. Uh, regardless. What of is what, their maximum squad size? Their maximum squad size is six. Is six, so, so just give, fill them out, three yeah, full squads. Three full squads. Um, what about the limitations then? What, 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 are, there's, uh, what are the downsides to these guys? You know, where, where are they weak? So... Uh, it's quite difficult to find a weakness to these guys. They're pretty good all-rounders. However, if I had to say that they have one weakness, it would be the lack of range on their weapons. Mm -hmm. um, they, they do suffer from that because, as we know, 40K is very much, uh, at the moment anyway, a shooting game. Mm -hmm. However, these guys do get around that a little bit. Um, it's hard beyond that to see a weakness. Um, I've came up against them quite a few times. Um, once particularly a guy just did that three groups of six threw them at me and I couldn't do anything about it you know uh, <laughs> if I'm honest you know so so you're speaking from experience <laughs> here then I'm speaking very much from experience um uh what happened was um he threw them forward I obviously foolishly tried to target one of the units you know tried to take it down couldn't couldn't even with all of an 1850 guard mm -hmm. gun line shooting might have been unlucky but certainly with all those three plus three rollable saves couldn't do very much against it mm -hmm. failed to actually destroy one unit um, and then I still had his whole ent entire 1850 army yeah uh, coming at me so it was kind of um, at that point it was make or break because you know the likes of wyverns which I love to use to take out um, uh, you know, kind of any squad, mm -hmm. um, wh whether it's an elite squad of small numbers or a horde, uh, because they're great. They've strength four AP six, not great, but they're firing four blast weapons. Um, 
with Ignore's cover. Mm. So usually that chews through things, even like Eldar jet bikes, which are relying yeah. on the jinx saves mm -hmm. to a degree. Um, but these guys, because three plus and vulnerable, uh, I'm needing fives to wound them. Even with Shred, that's quite tr tricky to do lots of damage. Um, Shred is be a reroll to um, to wound as well as to hit. Yeah, um, it's like twin linked for for wounding. Yeah, <clears throat> but um, even with those kind of weapons, just wasn't doing enough damage. Mm -hmm. um, Laz cannons, well, they take a Laz cannon and they shrug it off because of the three plus invulnerable. So conventional weapons aren't kind of, aren't aren't very good for them. You know. So how would you? Uh, <clears throat> what would you use against them? How do? How am I? How am I going to counter this? Um, probably lots of small arms fire. Yeah, I would say as much small arms fire as you can. If you can get uh, the likes of, because um, they're quite high toughness. Um, you know, it's really hard to kind of say what what's great to kind of counter these. Um, oh, there we go. He's fucking <laughs> unkillable. Unkillable. Yeah. They're, they're not. They're, I mean, they're not. They're not unkillable. I, I would say yeah, yeah. Eldar scat bikes um, would be pretty exceptional. Um, everyone puts scatter lasers on them these days. Three shots, thirty-six inch range. Um, they can move again in the assault phase. Um, oh, that would yes. No, they would do, see how know, that would work. They're yeah. churning out a lot of shots, uh -huh. a lot of hits. If you if they're guided, they're getting rerolls. Maybe. You know. Well, break this down for me. Do you know? Obviously, there's a whole lot of stuff, but generally, do I want to try and kill them before they reach me, or do I want to say, no, I'll go all in and try and go into close combat with them? I would generally try and if if that configuration is coming at you, where you've got three squads running at you, mm -hmm. think about what is it behind his behind his wraiths that is maybe going to be more important late game. Yeah, because if he's running that configuration, he's probably hoping to tie you up very quickly. Yeah. Now it's gonna hurt, um, one way or the other. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe if you throw enough in against them, you can maybe whittle them down. Yeah. Um, but there's probably something in the back lines that's probably maybe gonna cause you more problems. For. Yeah. Late game. Having said that, though, if you wanted to run smaller squads, they're still good. Um, yeah. With Maelstrom missions, as as we mentioned, if you have a couple of squads of them, they're 120 points for three. Mm -hmm. If you wanted a couple of squads just to nip around. Yeah. And kind of um, apply f apply pressure in different parts yeah, of the table, or yeah. or hold objectives. You know, they're three up in vulnerable toughness five, uh, two wounds. Yeah. So even if you have them on an objective, they're going to take a fair bit of hitting before mm -hmm. they kind of go down. Before you lose all three with fearless, you know, for one hundred and twenty points, that's a pretty pretty good unit to kind of use to kind of hold different objectives in different places. Yeah. Um, and if need be, they can go into combat. Awesome. You know. Well, over to you. What are your thoughts on these guys? How would you deal with them? How would you feel them? And yeah, I want to get I want to get your insight now as well. AJ, look, thank you very much for that. It's been a I, pleasure. I really enjoyed that. That unit has <laughs> completely come to life for me now. It's utterly terrifying, and all I want to do now is to go out and start collecting necrons. <laughs> typical. Typical. Right. We'll be back again with another unit spotlight. Um, so yeah, stick around and uh, we'll see you then. Cheers, guys. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that episode. Right, so we have a few links up to help you out. Check out the playlist. We also have a subscribe option. And remember, if you subscribe, to click the bell to ding our dong. Finally, if you're into binge watching and you want a whole lot more 40K charted, come on over to beastsofwar.com, join backstage, and you get early access to all of the seasons.